Today's recipe calls for peaches. We're going to be making peach cobbler. This is definitely a classic summertime dessert and holds some nostalgic feels for some people. This recipe is super simple and it comes out delicious. So with that said, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is preheat our oven to 350 while we get our peach cobbler ready. Next thing we're going to do in a large pot or saucepan is add one cup of granulated sugar and one cup of water. We're going to make a simple syrup. You want your heat to be on medium to low. We're going to cook this until all of our sugar has dissolved into our water and we have a clear liquid. You can grab a rubber spatula to help dissolve the sugar into your water a lot quicker. We've made a simple syrup multiple times on this channel, mostly for drink recipes, but we're gonna use it today for our peach cobbler. You wanna keep an eye on it so that your sugar doesn't burn. This should take about four to five minutes. Now that you have your simple syrup going, we're gonna start cutting our peaches. We're gonna cut six medium-sized peaches. Of course, give your peaches a nice thorough lean. The best method I found to cutting peaches is to take your chef's knife and cut into it until you hit the pit and then roll your peach across your cutting board until the cuts connect. I found this to be super easy there might be a better method out there but this works really well once you have them cut in half give it a twist like an avocado be careful not to squish them because peaches are really soft and go ahead and pull that stone out of the middle and give it a toss you can also use canned peaches for this recipe if you do use canned peaches then there's no reason to make the simple syrup there's enough simple syrup in the canned peaches that you can skip that step so run through and cut all of your peaches now that we have our peaches cut in half we're gonna start peeling them. So grab a paring knife and you're gonna take your blade and get it in between the peach skin and the peach itself. You're just gonna run your knife in between both to peel off the skin. Do your best not to get any of the peach, but if you do, it's not too big of a deal. Once you cut your peach like this in half, it will start to release a lot of the juices that it holds and the peaches become pretty slippery. So take your time and do your best not to cut yourself when doing this. You can also skip this step and leave the skins on. I bought my peaches about two to three days before I made this recipe, so it gave them time to really ripen, which made it easier to peel the skins off. But if you do that, be careful because peaches will ripen really quick and potentially start to rot before you ever make this recipe, which of course would be a waste of food and money. Some of my peaches had a little bit of bruising and some dark spots. I went ahead and cut those out and everything turned out just fine. So if you have any of that going on with your peaches, feel free and cut that out. Now that you have everything nice and peeled we're going to start cutting quarter inch slices once you have those all sliced go ahead and throw those in a bowl it's best to work in stages instead of doing all of your peaches at once do three at a time this will allow you enough workspace and you won't create a huge mess with all the peach juice you can easily cut these with a paring knife holding them right over the bowl to let all of that juice run into the bowl i found it a bit tricky so i went with the classic cutting board method once all of your peaches are cut, throw them in the bowl and feel free to grab your cutting board and scrape all of the juice straight into the bowl so we get all that delicious flavor and goodness. Next, we're going to take a rubber spatula and give our simple syrup a stir. Doing this will help free up a lot of the sugar because it becomes a paste once you add water to our sugar. So stirring it like this from the bottom of the pot will help dissolve all the sugar into the water a lot quicker and free up all of the crystals so they melt faster. Now that we have a nice and clear simple syrup, we're gonna add all of our peaches straight into our pot. We're gonna cook these for about two minutes. You don't wanna cook them for too long, of course, because we're gonna bake them and get everything nice and stirred up and well submerged in our simple syrup. This will help release a lot of the natural sugars that our peaches hold, giving us a nice and delicious peach flavored simple syrup. You're gonna cook these over medium high heat. Once they hit the two minute mark, go ahead and take your peaches off the heat and let the peaches steep in our simple syrup. Now that our peaches are steeping in our simple syrup, we're gonna melt one stick of unsalted butter. I wanted to add a little bit more complex flavors, so I went ahead and browned our butter, which will help bring out a little bit more of the nuttiness and a deeper, richer flavor. It's really up to you, you don't have to do that. You can straight melt it and be done, or you can brown it like I did. Now that your butter has been melted and browned a bit, we're gonna throw it in a nine by 13 inch baking dish. You can also use a cast iron pan or a Dutch oven, whichever you have should work. You wanna make a nice even layer with your melted butter. There should be enough fat in this that will grease your pan so you don't have to worry about anything sticking to it. 
Now in a large mixing bowl, we're gonna add one and one half cup of self rising flour because it doesn't need your help, it can rise on its own. Then to that, we're gonna add one cup of granulated sugar. The next thing we're gonna add to our bowl is one eighth teaspoon of freshly ground nutmeg. We're trying to be bougie and ground it fresh. You can skip this step and use pre-ground nutmeg, or you can also use cinnamon instead of nutmeg. Both pair really well with peaches. Now that our nutmeg is in the bowl, we're gonna add the zest from one medium lemon or the equivalent to about one tablespoon of lemon zest. It's best to microplane or zest your lemon right over your bowl because when zesting, it'll release some of the natural sugar crystals and a little bit of lemon juice. So do it right over your bowl and it'll help add even more lemon flavor. And run your finger down the back of your microplane to get all that zest off. Now that we have all of our dry ingredients in our bowl to make our batter, we're gonna give it a light whisk of the face to bring everything together to make a nice homogenous mix. Now that all of your dry ingredients are well mixed together, we're gonna add one and one half cup of milk. You can use any milk of your choice. Almonds pair really well with peaches, so you can also use almond milk if you choose. And the last thing we're gonna add is one and one half teaspoon of vanilla extract. Once you have all of your ingredients in your bowl, start whisking your face off to bring the dry ingredients together with your wet ingredients. Turning your bowl like this and running your whisk along the sides of your bowl will help ensure that you knock all of the dry ingredients off the sides into your wet ingredients to make a nice smooth batter. When whisking your face off, don't worry about over mixing your batter. Our batter should be fairly thin, so don't worry if it's not very thick. Now that you've got your workout for the day by whisking your face off, making your batter, you're gonna grab your baking dish that has the melted butter and you're gonna pour your batter right over your butter, like so. Don't worry about mixing the butter and batter together. You just wanna pour it right over the top and leave it like it is. And then pro tip, grab a rubber spatula and scrape down your batter bowl really well. We don't wanna waste any of that sweet batter that we worked so hard on and it'll also be a whole lot easier to clean later. Now that you have your butter and batter in your pan, grab your peaches and start laying your peaches right on top of our batter. Again, do not worry about mixing these two things together. That's why we use self rising flour. So when this bakes, the flour will rise right over our peaches and basically engulf everything to make a nice crust right on top of our peach cobbler. If you can't find self rising flour, I'll leave a recipe in the description so you can make your own. When I was looking stuff up, I saw that making your own self rising flour doesn't work as well as actual self rising flour, but nonetheless, your peach cobbler will still come out delicious. You just won't have as nice of a crust as you do with self rising flour. We are gonna end up with quite a bit of simple syrup left over. You can add it all to your pan to make your peach cobbler even sweeter and even more delicious, or you can strain it and set it aside and use the simple syrup to make margaritas, cocktails, or add it to your favorite tea, or even use it on pancakes and French toast. It's really up to you. Then you can take some of that simple syrup and drizzle it right over the top of your peaches. After you've added all of your peaches to your pan, this is what your peach cobbler should look like. And we'll go ahead and throw it in our preheated oven. If you want to play it safe, you can throw a sheet tray right underneath your peach cobbler, just in case if anything overflows, which it shouldn't. But if it does, then your sheet tray will catch it and you won't have such a big mess to clean later. We're gonna bake our peach cobbler for anywhere from 40 to 60 minutes. It all depends on where you live and how hot your oven runs. I set a timer for 40 minutes and checked on it periodically after that to ensure that everything was going according to plan. You're gonna cook your peach cobbler until your crust is nice and golden brown. And ensure that you use the light on your oven to check on it. Don't open the oven door, that'll release all the heat and your oven will have to start all over again to heat up to get back to temp. Just a pro tip for you. While your peach cobbler is in the oven baking, you can do the dishes, but that seems really boring. So I try to figure out how to thumb wrestle myself. Uh, that's pretty tough because you are a loser and a winner. Or you can say forget that and like this video and subscribe. I heard if you do those two things, it'll help your peach cobbler bake a lot faster. I think it's a myth, but let me know how it goes for you. Now that our timer has gone off, we're gonna pull our peach cobbler out of the oven. Now that we've pulled our peach cobbler out of the oven, we're gonna let it rest for 15 to 20 minutes. This will allow the peach cobbler to completely set up and it'll prevent us from burning our face hole with piping hot cobbler. 
I baked mine for about 45 minutes and that was the perfect sweet spot to give us that nice golden brown crust on the top. This is what you're looking for is that nice golden brown color. So it may take longer or it may take less time. Again, it all depends on your oven. Now that your peach cobbler has had some time to cool down and set up, grab your favorite bowl and a large serving spoon and serve yourself up a nice big piece of that peach cobbler. And don't be afraid to go back and get any of the peaches that were left behind in the pan. And also don't be afraid to grab a scoop of vanilla ice cream to throw on top. It goes great with cobbler. All right, now that our peach cobbler is done, let's give it a shot. The aesthetic of it is nice and golden brown. It looks delicious and that crust. It's nice and crunchy on top, so let's give it a shot. Try to get a good bite of all of it. Hot damn! Slap me silly and call me Billy. This is delicious. That's what somebody would say from down them yonder states, but we're not from there, so here's a review. This stuff is pretty sweet. The vanilla is a nice flavor to it, and then it has a slight hint of nutmeg. But then that lemon adds some acidic flavor to help cut through that sweetness and add some bright, fresh flavors. Then the peaches are still nice and tender, and they're fresh, of course, which makes it even more delicious. Then that crust is nice and light and fluffy and crunchy, so it adds a nice texture to it. Overall, it comes together really well, and a little bit goes a long way. All right, that's it for today's video. This recipe is really simple and it comes together really quick as well. This is the perfect dessert recipe for any novice baker out there, just like myself. Or if you have any of those offspring, you can have them help because it's also that simple. So if you enjoyed today's video, give it a like and also find me on Instagram at taylormakes92. I totally forgot to grab the vanilla ice cream when I was out. So now I have to drive like hell like I'm in NASCAR to get back before this cobbler cools. So we'll see you on the next one. All right, that's it for today's recipe. Nope, video. It's a video, not a recipe. All right, that's it for today's recipe. No, it's a video. I was out, so now I have to drive like hell, like I'm in NASCAR, to get back before this cobbler melts? Nope, cools. Yeah. Then that vanilla adds another freshness, but it's not, okay? It's really easy for any baker out there. I don't know.